faith. Yes. Amen. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh Lord. These services emanate from the sanctuary of the Fairlawn Baptist Church. Yes. Located at 4717 Augusta Road here in the beautiful city of Garden City, Georgia. Yes. The ministerial staff, the senior pastor, Minister Harold Edwards Sr., Minister Emmanuel Gray, Minister Victor Logan, and Minister Arnold Matthews. We're so delighted to come to you by way of Facebook on this Lord's Day as we celebrate the Holy Communion. Oh, yeah. And at this time, our weakest ministry are going to take us further into the Lord's service. Let's have a glorious time today in Jesus' name. We'd like to say good morning to each of you today. We just want to be so thankful that we're able to be standing before you yes. and have these church services. Yes. And I just wanted to point out it should not take COVID 19 to say, Give God thanks. We should be doing that a long time before. Yes. As we begin our program, we're going to have an open song by Deacon Anthony. Yes.
for us, there's nothing wrong being at home praising and worshiping there too as well. Lord, uh, I hope I hope everyone's doing well. And we're going to keep everybody in sequence and in our prayers as well. Yeah. We're going to read from Second Chronicle. No, I'm sorry, Second Corinthians chapter mm -hmm. six. Yes. Uh, verse one. Starting from verse one. I'm going to be reading from the NIV version. Yes. As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he said, in the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I help you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's wet path so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way. Yes. In grace, endurance, in trouble, hardship, disaster, in beating, imprisonment, in riots, in hard work, sleepless night, hunger, impurity, understanding, patience, kindness, and the Holy Spirit and sincere love. In truthful speech, speech and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad reports and good reports, being genuine yet regardless of as impostors, known yet regardless as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, yet having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians, and open wide our hearts to you. We are not withholding our affection from you, but you are withholding yours from us. As fair exchange, I speak as to my children. Open wide your heart also. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers, for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? Or the harmony there be between Christ and Bala? What does a believer have Common with an unbeliever. Chapter 6, verse 6, 16. What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Amen. 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 We'd like to thank Deacon Deacon for that wonderful scripture. Oh, yes. And now we'll be brought to the throne of grace by Deacon Peter. Giving honor to God. Yes. Past the office of the members, Christian friends. Let us pray. Most holy, everlasting Father God. Yes. Dear Lord, we thank you that you are the omniscient, all oh, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you that you are the omnipotent, all-powerful God. Yes. Most of all, dear Lord, we thank you that you are the God of the God of Thank you, Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, yes. for showing us that love by waking us up this morning. Yes, thank you, Lord. Clothed and in our right mind with the blood running warm in our hands. Yes. Thank you. We thank you, dear Lord, for showing us that love when you sent your darling son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. To die on the cross for our sins, dear Lord. Yes.
that your yoke is easy yeah. and your burden is light. And that we ought to cast all our cares upon you. Yeah. For you care for us. Yeah. And we thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, Lord.
up this morning. Oh, Lord. He gave us many years to live on this earth. Yes, yes, he man. continues to bless us each and every day. Yes, yes. So let us always in all things give God thanks. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes. This concludes our devotional services. Yes. At this time, we'll return it back up to our pulpit and our pastor. Yes. Thank Our praise and our worship because 
we want you to have it this morning because yes, it is rightfully yours. Yes, oh Lord, we thank you for the blessings that are brought to your children that are in this place to this moment in time here at Philon this morning. The week may have been a week that it may have been trying, but glory to God, through your grace, we were able to make it. And we know that we'll be able to march on to victory because of the power that is in your holy name. We thank you, O oh Lord, that we're here once again to be able to gather and to minister according to your will and according to your word. So we ask that you would bless us in a way that you've never blessed us before. Yes. Bless us, O oh Lord, that we might, hallelujah, lend our services to you, that others might be edified this morning. But more than anything, Father and Lord Jesus, that you might be glorified. Yes. The words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer. Yes, Lord. Lord, give us grace yeah. to hear and to understand and give us grace to preach that this hour be one that is edifying, yes. not only to those that are gathered here, but those who are watching by way of Facebook yes, Lord. and YouTube. Do it for us. Yes, we'll give you all the praise, honor, and the glory. Hallelujah for everything that is done in our lives and through our lives because we know that you deserve it. In the blessed name of Jesus Christ, who is Lord, we say amen. 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 And amen. So glad to be here again. This is our communion Sunday. Glory amen. to God. Our communion Sunday where we uh, partake of the bread and the juice yes. on the second Sunday. Yes. And remember as Jesus said, of him. Oh. And I was ordained into the Baptist ministry about 22 years ago. Okay. And uh, after coming from the full gospel ministry, glory to God. In 22 years, there's one thing that I've come to understand, church, mm. about communion and some parishioners, some parishioners in the body of Christ that are Baptists. And I'm only speaking from a Baptist perspective because I can't speak from any other perspective. Here at Phil, you can always tell when some parishioners have had a bad Saturday night. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Uh, perhaps there's been something that has been going on in their life that the Holy Spirit has brought some conviction. Uh -huh. Conviction that they haven't gotten to the understanding right now means that you're supposed to feel guilty and change and turn, but yet they still press on. But, I, but I've come to find out that, that whenever we have communion, you will know. Because whenever the deacons minister the communion the trays of glory to God, uh, some would say, not me, pass by me. Oh, oh, oh. Not understanding that that communion tray does not have to pass them. No. Boy, if you committed an act of sin, it is simply a matter of confessing it and moving on. Yeah, yeah. But they do it because somebody had told them that the Bible says that if they do it and uh, eat not discerning, listen to what I'm saying now, eat not discerning the Lord's body, they eat and drink damnation to themselves. So they believe because they went to the club, uh -huh. and had a few other things that, you know, they cannot partake of the communion supper. But let me tell you what it's saying in that 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Paul is talking about sin against the body of Christ. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you have a bad Saturday night or you got something going on in your life, you need to get that right. But when we read what Paul wrote to the church at Corinth, it was because they had been treating each other in an ungodly fashion. Yeah, yeah. Pastor, what you're saying? I'm saying that, that when we serve communion, when you partake of communion, when the Bible says, let a man examine himself uh -huh. uh, so that he does not eat or drink unworthily, not discerning the Lord's body. When we treat, mistreat one another, when we're not walking in love the way God wants us to walk in love one towards another, this is what Paul was talking about. Yeah, yeah. So I encourage you today, if you had a bad Saturday night, confess it and move on. But I also encourage you that if you're not walking in the kind of agape love and the kind of agape fellowship that, that God has ordained for the body of Christ, we need to get it right. Amen. Amen. Because what's going to happen is, you're going to eat and drink damnation to yourself. Yeah. So let us be mindful that it's about the body. 
Amen? Yeah. Amen? Our scripture lesson this morning is going to be coming from the book of Romans, the fifth chapter. And we are going to begin reading at verse 1. Romans 5, 1. When you find it, would you stand with us? Romans 5, 1 on this communion Sunday. Hallelujah. All those who are watching by way of Facebook, we're going to give you time to get your Bibles out, get your swords out so you can follow along with us. You know, it's always about what the word said. The preacher might make a mistake in what he's saying. So when you're reading along, and if you see where he's made a mistake, you can stop him and say, Pastor, you made a mistake there. That's not what it said. Amen. Amen. We Amen. study to show ourselves approved. Romans 5 1. Listen to what Paul wrote. He said, therefore, being what? Justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation works with patience. Patience, experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. But when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died. For the ungodly. Yeah. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet for adventure, for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God mm -hmm. commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Listen to what it says in verse 9. Much more than not being now justified by his blood, glory to God, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Yeah. Let me read that again. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Yeah. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of the Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Amen. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Thank you again, deacons, for our devotional and our musicians for the devotional that sets the stage, uh, sets the atmosphere, glory to God, of praise and worship that makes it easier to minister to the saints of God. Yeah. This morning we just want to, to, to talk from these words because it is our communion Sunday, Deacon Deacon, Deacon Lee, about the blood of Jesus Christ. You know on our communion Sunday it's about the bread and the blood, but we want to talk about the blood this morning and what it, uh, the blood means according to the Word of God. You know, the blood, glory to God, is going to be, according to God's word, that sign, hallelujah, like it was in Israel, that when God sees the blood, he's going to pass over you in judgment. Amen. It's all about the blood. Paul just told us, glory to God, when we were yet without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. That it was about his shed blood for you and I. The blood, God's sign, for judgment, yes. not to touch. Uh, Hallelujah. I'm so grateful this morning that, 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 I, that I'm covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. The sign, God, judgment, not to touch. The question this morning might be for some, why did Jesus institute and lead the church with the sacrament of communion to observe? The Bible gives us the answer, and it is for us to remember it is to be a reminder to us about the sacrifice that Christ made for us to deliver us from the wrath of God that is to come. Yeah. And the, 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 it is a reminder. He, he not only gave his life that we might be delivered uh, either from the wrath of God, but he says, I'm going to leave you with something that is going to be used as a reminder, Xavier, that every time you do it, you will know that what I did and what it is that I've done for you and what it means, that in the day of God's judgment, you won't have to worry about it. Yeah. Sacrament that reminds us not only did he deliver us by redeeming us from the curse of our sin, but the Bible says, Earl, that he became the curse for us so that you and I, yeah. glory to God, as believers, will not have to face God's judgment as his enemy. I'm so glad this morning that I am the friend of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because I know that in the day of judgment, God's going to only deal with his friends a certain way and his enemies quite in another way. So he left us with this sacred right according to the Bible that he said that as often as you do this, yes. you 
do it in remembrance of me. In other words, Beverly, you do it, glory to God, in remembrance of what I've done for you. That every time that it, when we do it, we can leave, when we take the bread and the blood, if it really pricks our conscience, Kim, as to what Christ has done for us, it will compel us to live, glory to God. In the way that he's commanded us, because he said, you, are, you don't have to face the wrath of my Father because of what I've done for you and because you've accepted it. Grace through faith. Yes. Remember that reminds us that at one time the Bible says we were dead and trespassers yes. and sins. That, that means that you were in a condition that you could not get out. Ooh. No matter how hard you tried, Leo asked him that you were digging and the hole was only getting deep. Well, hallelujah. Yes. Because you couldn't get yourself out of that. Yes. It was going to take somebody, glory to God, who know more about digging yes. than about holes than you did. Yes. Yes. Remind us that we were once without God in the world and without hope. You see, for those, glory to God, who don't have God this morning, who don't have Jesus Christ because they have not made the decision to accept him, they have no hope. Doesn't matter about what they have in the bank. Doesn't matter where they live. Doesn't matter what social status they ascribe to. Without God, they have no hope to remind us that he chose, Philippians says, to make himself of no reputation that he might die the death of the cross. In other words, being God himself, he took on a body, glory to God, and came down and, and left his glory into heaven and came down and humbled himself as a man and found the cross at Calvary yeah. to die. He wants to remind us of that. Remind yeah. us that it is he that was dead. And glory to God, he is alive forevermore. Yeah. And that he has the keys to hell and death, glory to God. Yeah. If you make it into hell, he's yeah. going to be the one that opens the door. And if you make it into heaven, he's the one that has the keys to that too. That's the only way. So you ain't getting in by the Pope. You ain't getting in by the pastor. You ain't getting in by Peter. You ain't getting in by the priest. Jesus Christ is hiding the door. Yeah. And the man get in, he got to come by me. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. If your hope this morning is in St. Peter, then you need to reevaluate your situation. He wants to remind us when we partake of this precious right, truly as the children of God, having the sign of Christ shed blood upon the doors of our hearts through faith in him, that God's promise of the remission for our sins is truly going to be ours because where the shedding of blood is only the place that sins can be forgiven. You see, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. When there is sin, somebody has to die. The Bible says sin came in by man, and it has to be what? Deliverance by man. Yeah, yeah. Many in the churches this moment, all around the world will partake of Holy Communion in observance of the sacred rite. Yes. But many Deacon Anthony will partake of it without an understanding of what it represents. I've gotten more religious argument with folk in the Baptist church who said I got to have my communion. You don't understand. My daddy didn't get his communion. My mama didn't get his communion. I said, did they get saved? That's the most important thing. You see, because they're trusting in something. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Argue with you. You need to talk with them deacons. They didn't call me. They didn't bring by my communion. Glory to God. You better be glad that Jesus came and brought you salvation because that's what it's all about today. Oh yeah, we have to do this in remembrance of him, but if you fail to do it, glory to God, it's all right, glory to God. Not going to change the thing, but if you fail to accept the grace of God that is in Christ Jesus, you are going to be in trouble. Many partake of it because they believe it is the religious thing to do. All oh, some will take it, you know, and when you see them out in the world, you ask them, how you doing? They'll tell you these things. 
I paid my tithes. Glory to God. That's always number one on the list. And that tells me a lot about their spiritual experience, their spiritual growth, because they're putting their trust in paying tithes. And they'll tell you, I took my communion. They think that taking communion, glory to God, is the religious thing to do. Then there's some that believe that in communion there is supernatural power to heal me of my infirmities. And some, glory to God, believe that taking of communion will save their souls. None of these things are true. It is not about religion but about redemption. Yeah. Not about physical healing, yeah. but about spiritual deliverance. And not about saving one's soul, but about saving those who have been born again from the anger and the wrath of God that's going to be poured out in the day of judgment. Yeah. It is a reminder oh, to us of what this is all about, what Calvary was all about. And if any man or any woman has not been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, you can eat your little heart out, you can drink your little heart out, it ain't going to matter. It's just going to assure that you are going to stand before God as God's enemy because unless you're born again, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. It is the shed blood of Christ that has to be applied to our hearts by grace yes. through faith, glory to God. Yes. Where God sees the blood, hallelujah, he's going to pass over you. So we need to understand this morning as believers that fell on, glory to God, that the blood of Jesus Christ is not something that we plead against the devil whenever we feel like we are coming under his attack, glory to God. It is in those times that we need to invoke the name of Jesus. If you want to see the devil flee, call on the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to remind the devil that the Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And devil, you are not going to be the exception. You are going to bow like everybody. Tell him that, glory to God, when he's coming against you and see if he does not flee. Blood is the substance of Jesus' life that he carried into the most holy place to gain, the Hebrew writer says, eternal redemption for us. And you need to know that it ain't just going to be the devil, glory to God, who will face the wrath of God. But there are going to be billions there, glory to God, who are going to face the wrath of God at the great white throne judgment because they refuse to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Nothing can take away my sin. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. They will stand in defiance and rebellion to God and they will perish. They will face the wrath and the anger of almighty God. God. Yeah, yeah. See, the sacrament of communion is the representation yeah, of God's Son for those who have been delivered and who will not be destroyed because they have been justified huh. by faith and are at peace yeah, huh. with God through their Lord Jesus Christ justified by faith and are at peace with God. Hallelujah. Notice what I said. The devil priest can come in and, and make peace for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want y'all to have this morning. There's no pastor that can make peace for you. The Bible says he made peace for us by the blood of his cross. You got peace with God this morning. It's because of the work of Calvary. Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. If you're not accepting Jesus Christ, you're God's enemy this morning and you're headed for the wrath of God. In other words, Christ has become because we've been delivered. Our Passover lamb. Glory to God. 
Then to come out Passover lamb, glory to God. The shed blood that he shed has covered us, glory to God, because he shed his precious blood. The lamb whose blood has paid for our sin. The lamb whose blood has made peace for us. The lamb whose blood has marked our hearts. That in that day that God pours out his wrath, hallelujah, we will be spared from the judgment of God. Somebody ought to say hallelujah, knowing that no matter how hard it gets, no matter how rough it gets in that day of morning, that God is not going to judge you and I because we are believers in Christ Jesus, but the world is going to be judged. We are going to be judged at the, at the beamer seat of Christ's righteousness to get your rewards. That's why I tell you, labor, work hard. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord, but those who will face the great white throne judgment will face the wrath of God. And that wrath is going to be an eternal life in the lake of fire. As I said before, some people say God's too nice. Hallelujah. To put anybody in a lake of fire. I said, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, ma'am. God is just too just to let your sin go. Unchallenged. And if you believe that God is not going to hold true to his word, you are deceiving yourself. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, and wherever God out of there sees the blood, he's going to pass over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's going to pass over us in that great day of the judgment. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 13, when God had established glory to God, uh, the Passover with the children of Israel. It was to be, the Bible says, uh, according to the Bible, a sign that would spare them from the power of the destroyer. Hallelujah. A sign when only done in obedience would have the power to cause God to spare them. You heard what I said? A sign to those who have done what God has called them to do in obedience to God's word. Hallelujah. Would have the power in that day of judgment to be spared. You see, according to God's word, they had to take Earl the Lamb of God's choosing. You remember in Genesis 22, when Abraham took little Isaac up on the mountain, and Isaac said, Father, I see the altar, and I see the wood, and I see the fire, but where is the Lamb? And Abraham said, Son, God will supply himself a, a lamb, glory to God. And, we, and he said to the children of Israel, get a lamb of God's choosing. Shut it up from the 10th day to the 14th day of the same month. Then in the evening of the 14th day, they were to kill it and to take the blood and strike it on the two side posts, hallelujah, and on the upper door post, some people said it formed a cross, hallelujah, of their houses, strike the blood on the door post and on the lintel, God said, I want you to do it the way, I want you to kill a lamb, I want you to prepare it a certain way, I want you to take a lamb of a certain proportion of size for your family, and if your family too small, then get some neighbors over, cook it a certain way, don't leave no certain things in your house, don't have unleavened bread, glory to God, and do it the way I said, do it. Yeah. 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 See, that's the key. Yeah. Huh? Got to do it yeah. the way God says. Right. And he says, when you put the blood on the side post and the other post, you can leave. And when I execute judgment on Egypt to kill all the firstborn in the land, when I see the blood, how do you all pass over? You were in judgment. That was a sign to the children of Israel. It's the same sign that God, glory to God, gives to us today that where God sees the blood, blood. He's going to pass over yes. us. Yes. He said, Follow His divine instructions. Hallelujah. It might not be about putting blood out on the doorpost anymore of your house, glory to God, but it is about the blood applied to our hearts. God said it like this. He said, you must believe in your hearts that Jesus Christ, uh, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You see, it was a sign back then with the blood on the doorpost, and the sign today is the same sign that the blood must be to the heart. Lamb that God has supplied. Lamb who shed his 
his blood yeah, right. yeah. so that it might be struck on the doors of our hearts. Hallelujah. All that believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yes, he is. And in believing, know that you will have eternal life. It's all about the blood. Yes, it is. The hymn writer says, the blood that never loses its mighty power. No matter how, glory to God, your sins might be as scarlet, the blood is able to make them white. Like snow. Blood that saves from judgment. Blood that will deliver glory. The question this morning, all that are listening under the sound of my voice, yes. have you had the blood of Jesus Christ applied to your heart? For you must. Because if you have not, you're on your way to facing the wrath of God. But yeah. only where God sees the blood is he going to pass over you? Doesn't matter how religious you are. Doesn't matter how long you've been in the church. Doesn't matter about your position in the church. The only thing that matters is whether or not the blood of Jesus Christ has been applied to your heart. And if it has not, then judgment is on its way for you. As we stand our feet, there might be somebody who needs to be washed in the blood. Who need to be saved, who need to be made at peace with God, and only the blood can do it for you. If you listen this morning and you know that you need Jesus, I beseech you by the mercy of God that you accept him today because now is the time, today is the day for salvation. Tomorrow is not promised to you. When he washes you in his blood, he says the transaction is a one-time deal. You will never be dirty again. Hallelujah. All the blood will just continue to cleanse and cleanse and cleanse. You don't have to worry about sin because salvation will be yours. If you're listening and you know you need Jesus, don't listen to the devil's lies about, well, you know you're not through with that affair you have. You know you're not through with the lying that you've been doing. You know you're not through with this or that. Don't worry about that. Come to Jesus. And let Jesus, hallelujah, By confessing him as Lord with your mouth. I say, I believe, Jesus, you are Lord. And I believe that you died for sin and God raised you from the dead. And according to your word, you said, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Tell him to Lord Jesus, I'm calling on you this morning. Save me from the wrath of God that is to come.
name of Jesus, oh Lord, some elements have been prepared for us to break bread and to drink juice together. We ask, oh Lord, that you would consecrate it as I lift it up to you in prayer. That you would sanctify it for the purpose of which we are partaking of it. We're doing this in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We'll show forth for his death until he returns. So we ask that you would consecrate it. Sanctified, blessed, and set it apart for these colonies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The Bible says that he took bread, blessed, and broke, gave to them, said, This is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when he had poured the cup, he said, This cup is the cup in my blood, the New Testament, that was shed for the remission of sin. Yeah. When you do this, you do this in remembrance of of me. Jesus died so you and I might live. He died so he could deliver us from the wrath of God that is to come. He died to save our souls, to make us whole again. It is so important, glory to God, that we accept the work of Calvary as a word to the glory of God. We thank the Lord for what he has done, what he is doing in our lives. Let us go forth as the children of God. Bless in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and take in every second, every moment that God has given us to glorify and to magnify his name. For the day of accountability will come when we will stand before the God of all creation as his children, as his friends, to have our works examined and only that which we stand Will he say, Be
Yes, Lord.